I grew up in, in, in an abusive home. My mom was a Catholic, she was a good wife, but my dad had a lot of problems. He drank a lot and he had a huge gambling problem. Um, there was times that he, he would gamble his vehicle and come home walking without a car. And, you know, things used to get so bad that he used to tell my mother, you know, if I'm drunk and I'm asking you for money, don't give it to me. And she would do exactly that. But sometimes he'd be so drunk that he would just explode and, you know, he'd just be abusive. So when I was nine years old, um, my mother had enough and she walked away from my dad. And for a while, you know, he was being um, led by people that were trying to get him to do the right thing and even to go to church. And for a little bit, he was doing good. You know, we would hear good things about him. But then he went back to sin. He went back to the drinking. And one night, my mother got a phone call um, saying that my dad committed suicide. And that's when my world turned upside down. Losing my dad um, at the time, you know, it was shocking. I didn't understand why. Um, but as I grew a little older into my teenage years, um, I started to come up with my own conclusions. I started to think that maybe it was my mother's fault, that it was our fault. And it just started leading me into depression, you know, not having a dad in my life and looking for that father figure led me to the streets, looking in the wrong places, getting into gangs. And it just started to destroy my life. So I, I tried taking my life a few times as a teenager and I ended up in the hospital. And while I was there, somebody told me, you know, you should write some poems, write some music. It was the only thing I had in the room because I couldn't have anything on me that I could hurt myself with. But I have this grace period where somebody would be there with me. And I just started writing music. And I remember coming out into the world and all of a sudden just started rapping these songs. And it seemed like everybody just loved it. I got the attention from everybody. I started performing, writing music. Um, but the crazy thing is that all these songs that I was writing, it was like my soul crying out. You know, all these songs were about how sad I felt, how depressed I was, how much, you know, I hated life. It, 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 it literally was me crying out, but I fell into a world where these type of things were being praised. And, and that it, it's like the, the devil came into my life and made me believe that he, he, he was here to save me. So I gave my name uh, of Temperamento, uh, which is temperament. And, you know, people at that time used to see me as somebody that when I was good, I was really nice. And when I got mad, I was really bad. So, you know, that became my stage name. And I started making music online and got famous off the internet. And, you know, I wasn't really looking for fame. It was almost like fame came looking for me because of the attention that I got. So I started uh, doing shows, performing, and record labels were coming up to me. And I soon realized that the music industry was more spiritual than business because when I would show up to have meetings with the top dogs in the record labels, they will always tell me like, hey, before you sit with this person, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. And it all involved, you know, voodoo and, and witchcraft and things like that. And, you know, something inside of me um, just kept telling me like, this ain't right, this ain't right, this ain't the world that you belong in. Because in reality, you know, music to me, then came to, you know, save my life. But what well, the people and everything that was around me, it just didn't feel good. Um, the things that I heard uh, were just not what I wanted for myself. So even though I was in the world and I was around all this stuff and the partying and the drugs and the, the women, there was something inside of me that kept telling me like, you don't belong here. And I decided to walk away from it for a little bit. But when I returned home and I, and I turned away from, from all these people and I tried to do it on myself, I went back to the streets and started hanging out with the wrong people. And I ended up getting in trouble and going to prison. So going to prison for me was tough 
because I, I realized that, you know, I lost everything. I lost my family. Um, my mother will always tell me, Christian, if you go to prison, I'm not gonna visit you because that, that's not where my son belongs. And she didn't visit me while I was there. So I was hurt. I was in there in, in this darkness, in this room where, you know, I was being told what to do every single day. And I was lost. I was looking for hope. I remember the first time that Amanda, my wife, came to see me in prison. And I remember looking out the window and as she was walking towards the car, I see her fall to the floor and my heart broke. I realized that I needed a change. This wasn't the type of man that I wanted to be. She didn't deserve that. And I realized that I hurt so many people by being there. And I, I just felt so helpless, lost, and I needed somebody, I needed someone to come and save me. And one day a correctional officer walked in and he started to speak life into me. And I remember that day I, I told him, I said, you know, uh, how do I know I'm safe? How do I know Jesus has my back? And he led me to the salvation prayer. And I remember I was on my knees uh, telling God that I was gonna give my life to him. And all the people that were there cheering me on when I first walked in there, cause I was famous, right? I heard all these people laughing at me because I have given my life to the Lord and I was in tears. So I realized right away that in order to follow Jesus, I will have to look away from the world and follow him. So yeah, so being in prison uh, was very spiritual to me. Um, I remember guys telling me, Christian, you know, this happens to everybody that walks in here. Everybody finds God. And I remember this one guy, he said, you know, as soon as you walk out of this door, you're gonna forget all about him. You're gonna go back into that same world. And I remember just being in there, uh, just telling myself, you know, that's not gonna be me. You know, I know that the Lord is real. You know, I read about him in there. I prayed, I saw miracles in there. You know, it's funny how in, in dark times, um, when you're desperate and you're seeking the Lord, you start to see a lot of spiritual things happen. So I knew the Lord was real and I knew I had a battle with the devil, but I walked out of there knowing that I was never looking back. And that's exactly what I did. Meeting Jesus uh, changed everything. Um, I never had that father in my life to lead me into, in, in, into doing the right things and just knowing Jesus and reading about him let me know that I had a father. I had somebody that loved me and cared about me and I could trust him. And that trust is what led me to the right church and to the right people. Not only do I tell people that church is important, you know, if you look at my life, uh, all my life I've been running. I've been going from home to home, from relationship to relationship. And when I met Jesus, you know, I, I got tired of running. So when he led me to the church, I knew that it was my home. I knew that if there was ever gonna be problems in my church, that I wanted to be a part of the solution, that I was never gonna turn my back and run away from my problems. So I'm really grateful that Jesus brought me to Legacy Church and Jesus restored everything in my life, you know? It saved my marriage, it gave me an opportunity to love my children, and it, it, it gave me a, a, a chance to be a good member of the community. All the, all the things that God wanted for me, he gave me, and uh, I'm really grateful for that. I, I look at myself and I say, man, if I would've left, maybe some of these people here would even be here today. So, man, <laughs> I get emotional because I know that, I know that God doesn't make mistakes and I know he brought me to the right home. That's why I'm here. And if, if Jesus was to walk in here right now and I could tell him something, I would just say thank you. Thank you for giving me a second chance. Thank you for letting me have a heart of forgiveness, be able to forgive people like my dad who hurt me, you know, and letting me, and letting me see life in a different light. I will say thank you. If you're feeling lost and empty, you know, just know that I was there. You know, I was in a place where I couldn't just come out and live my life. You know, I had to wait on the Lord, I had to trust Him. And I just say, man, just trust the Lord, give your heart to Him, know that He's always there, no matter what you're going through. 
and speak to him. He listens to you and he will answer your prayers and get you to where he wants you, which is always good.